Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. December 25th, Charles Schultz. Charles Schultz was an American cartoonist with a sense of dignity and the power of his work. In 1950, he published the first ever Peanuts comic strip. It was well written well-drawn, and well-loved around the world. People enjoyed the Peanuts cartoons because they addressed deep and complex issues that many people face. The humor served a high purpose and served it well. Schultz had originally named his strip Little Folks, but the syndicate changed the name to Peanuts. Later in an interview, Schultz said, The name Peanuts is totally ridiculous. It has no meaning, is simply confusing, and has no dignity and I think my humor has dignity. And he had dignified fans. President Ronald Reagan once wrote to Schultz to say that he identified with Charlie Brown. In 1969, the Apollo 10 command module was named Charlie Brown, and the lunar module was named Snoopy. Today's story features Schultz at his dignified work. When you have the boldness to be authentic, people pay attention. Charles Schultz kept it real. As a producer, he was always authentic, and whatever he produced had a way of wrestling with life's biggest questions, and he thought it should, as long as it resisted the temptation to skim the surface. Before the first airing of A Charlie Brown Christmas, the Peanuts classic, television executives actually called the show flat and it only aired at all because it was sponsored by Coca-Cola and it was on the docket. Even Schultz's own team thought it was doomed. After watching it for the first time, one of them said, I think we've ruined Charlie Brown. Yet, when it aired that historic night in 1965, a Charlie Brown Christmas captured nearly half of television's viewing audience. Shortly after the show was released, it actually won a Peabody Award and an Emmy. Now, more than 50 years later, many families still consider this cartoon to be the official start to their Christmas celebration. According to the method of the day, when it came to producing A Charlie Brown Christmas, Schultz and his team did everything seemingly wrong. At the time, less than 9% of television shows had religious content, but Schultz insisted that the real story of Christmas be shared. The word of God in Luke 2, 8 through 14 says, That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared among them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. They were badly frightened, but the angel reassured them, saying, Do not be afraid, for I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone. The Savior, Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. This is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth for all of those pleasing him. Schultz said, If we're doing this show, I am going to add some meaning to it. I don't want it to be just something funny. I think we should talk about the true meaning of Christmas, at least what it means to me. The director pushed back and said, this is religion. It just doesn't go in a cartoon. With a firm response, Charles said, if we don't do it, then who will? When a team member assumed there would be a laugh track, Schultz simply got up and left the room. No discussion. Later, critics complained about the jazz music track Charles chose for the show and how he used children instead of adults to do the voices. It was said to make the show amateur at best. But a Charlie Brown Christmas worked. Perhaps a better description would be authentic. Schultz knew a thing or two about authenticity. For years, his comic strip had been an extension of his personal journey in life. Charlie Brown, with his introspection and self-doubt, 
had grown out of Schultz's struggle. When Charles was young, he was put two years ahead in school, which made him the perfect target for bullying. Like Charlie Brown, he had often felt left out. And after returning home from the military service during World War II, Schultz got serious about his faith. Charles was always one to dig deep. He spent hours studying the Bible, marking up the margins, circling key words, and writing personal insights. As he journeyed in question, so did his characters. In 1985, Schultz wrote a conversation between two characters, Sally and Charlie. Sally asked, when we die, will we go to heaven? Charlie responded, I like to think so. A bit of an enigma, Schultz was never happier than when he had a good idea, was drawing it well, and someone laughed at it. At the same time, he wasn't satisfied unless his work had depth. I hate shallow humor, he said. I hate shallow religious humor, I hate shallow sports humor, and I hate shallowness of any kind. For decades, Charlie Brown and the gang made society think about big questions, and a whole culture was impacted. Schultz said, anybody who is writing finds he puts a little of himself in all of the characters, at least in this kind of strip. You have to put yourself, all of your thoughts, all of your observations and everything you know into the strip. Do you put your authentic self into your work? When you have the boldness to be authentic, people pay attention. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.